right, thank you. Good morning. It's good to be here in Rotterdam. Um, so I have the pleasure to walk you through a survey that we did um, last year with about 3,000 clients uh, and give you the result of that survey and also walk you through examples. What I mean by example and use cases is business value. At the end of the day, we're all here because we have interest in IoT. It's all about interest of the business value. And I want to walk you through that. Uh, so a couple of words on the survey. Um, IBM has been conducting surveys for, uh, for a couple of, uh, of, I would say, decades now. That's the 19th survey we did uh, last year, uh, end of December. Uh, so we are nine months into that. So keep that in mind as I'm going to walk you through the, uh, the result of the survey. Uh, things have moved a little bit, and uh, I want to show you how. Uh, so about 3,000 CXOs, CIOs, CEOs, uh, chief digital officer, chief data officers, uh, and asking them questions about IoT. And the first finding which really struck us is that everybody is already embarked on IoT. While 66% are already engaged in a big way on IoT. So obviously you also you, you have uh, the end of what I call the end of the tail that are clients that are just experiencing IoT, doing trials, um, do POCs, but most of our customers have already embarked in, in an IoT journey. 66% of them, and that was nine months ago, are already really deploying and running on IoT. I think that's an amazing number. And so we are IBM, so we like to put people in, uh, in a structure, what can be unstructured, right? So, so we've put people in uh, these, these clients into, uh, in, into different categories. So you can see on, on the bottom scale, that's the level of IoT adoption. And on the top scale, that's how transformative IoT is for these customers. So what's amazing to see is that you have a bucket of about 38 people, 38% of, of the companies uh, and we have surveyed that are telling us, well, we're not sure whether IoT is going to be transformative for our business and we're not really trying things or we, we do things, but not in a meaningful way. You have about 13% of them that strongly believe that IoT is going to be transformative to their business, but they're not there yet, right? Uh, so that's the first category. We focus the survey on the right end of, of, of that chart. So people that have, and customers have deployed IoT in a big way, so really rolling out IoT in a massive way, either for, for I would say, uh, optimizing their operations, tactical IoT, I would call that tactical IoT, or for transformative IoT. So 31% of them are uh, rolling up tactical IoT and 19% and of them strategic transformation. That's amazing to me, and that's, that's about the 66% of the company we surveyed. Now, if we look and we focus a little bit more on this right-hand corner, what is the impact of their IoT business into their own business, into their profitability, into their revenue growth? And see the difference between, so I, we kept the colors, the pink are the tactical ones, and the, um, the purple are the real transformative IoT project see the impact and the difference it has on their top line, on their profitability, and on their image they have in the market, in their industry. So what is making this difference? I think it's all about being bold. So being bold means many different things for many different people. Obviously, the more transformative your business is, the more impact you're going to have. And we strongly believe we are right now in IoT in a situation where we can enable our clients to be bold and have bold initiatives for their business, transform their business using IoT. So what does it mean really transforming business um, uh, using IoT? So there's, we found out there's kind of three categories where we IBM decide to focus on and which fits pretty well the, the, the finding of the survey. So IoT helps engineer and build better products. So if you're a company, you're designing a product, you're building a product, you want to be using usage data, consumption data, based on IoT, to create better products, improve the service and the product you're going to be delivering, improve the design, improve the usability, and, and use that data in the way you manufacture your product. 
63% of our clients agreed that IoT and AI, the information coming from IoT, helps increase loyalty, customer loyalty and build better products. So that's one area. The other big area for, for IoT is about improving operation, managing things better. So when you need to manage a port like Rotterdam, you have a lot of assets. How do you manage that better? How do you improve asset utilization? That's a huge, huge, huge uh, area of savings. And also, there's a lot of new innovations coming here. IoT also enables something that is kind of, I would say, kind of new, but which is very promising and growing very, very fast, is, is engaging clients in a new fashion. And you can think about what we call the digital assistants, which are helping us um, in, in doing things better, leveraging all the information and all the ecosystem of, of information we have, for, ranging from device to any sensors that are out there. So engineering better products, managing better operations, and engaging clients and, and people in a different way. So then now let me give you a couple of examples. So obviously, IoT is not yet helping fly cars, but we're getting there. Uh, so there's a couple of things uh, we are doing in, 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 in the transportation space. Be it a car, a train, um, an aircraft, a boat, a ship, whatever, a bike. Um, so we, we are actually working with car manufacturers to help using IoT and, and sensor data to produce better cars. Better car means different things for different people. It could, be calling, it could be safer car. You want your car to slow down if the car in front of you uh, is also slowing down, so using uh, radar sensor data. For some other, uh, better car would be self-parking, for instance. If you don't like to park your car, you, you can press a button, and then all of a sudden, all the sensors that are needed are put in motion and are putting your car and then uh, putting gears together, breaking the car, moving your keys, your, 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 the, the wheel, and so on and so forth. So it's the combination of sensor data with system engineering that enables this, uh, these, these new services. So that's, that's a couple of examples. And the other example is about, uh, and I think most of us have already experienced ride sharing or car sharing. So we think IoT also helps go in the city and, and reduce traffic, reduce pollution by uh, renting a car and then uh, picking a car in the street and you can drive it and then you can uh, leave it somewhere else. And so reducing the need for having one or two car per household. So there's a lot of things in that space that IoT can do. The other typical asset that IoT can help better manage is buildings. We have buildings everywhere. Um, and, and obviously in buildings you have different things. You have elevators, you have escalators, you have a carpet, you have toilets, uh, you have things that need to be maintained, right? So, so it's not always easy to maintain the asset in, in a productive way. Uh, so IoT helps man manage that much better. Do predictive maintenance on elevator, for instance, or if you have uh, coffee spilled on your carpet or whatever, you're going to need to replace that, and you want to make sure that you can take a picture of, of oh, this is a coffee uh, stain on, uh, on a carpet. Let's send somebody who can clean that up. Uh, that's, that's a couple of examples that, that, that you can do with IoT. There's also a couple of things that are very important in the building space. It's about energy consumption. Uh, so you've all heard about uh, COP21, COP24 coming in a couple of years, which is the commitment from states that have signed the agreement about reducing energy. And buildings are producing, are consuming 40% of the Europe total energy. So saving energy and consuming energy b better um, through IoT is something that we, can have, we think can have a big impact on energy consumption and the way we are using our buildings. And the last thing we can do with building is, I mentioned about uh, engaging differently, is have what we call hospitality assistance. We are in an office, you need a room, hey, I need to book a room, and you, you can speak to a virtual agent, and can you book a room, I need a projector, I need to have catering, and so on and so forth. These kind of things make our life easier and better, and we think the IoT is also something that will be enabling these kind of use cases. You can transport IoT in, um, in the manufacturing space or in, the, in, in producing something, and then we're working, for instance, with a Sandvig mining. When you have these kind of equipments, if something breaks down in the machine, you can't produce anything. So that has a huge impact on your profitability in what you produce and in, in your operations. 
So IoT enables uh, predictive maintenance. So cap capturing information, vibration, uh, sensor vibration, speed of drilling, resistance, these kind of information help better predict how things could be breaking in the future and how they should be maintained. Huge cost, cost saving in, in maintaining the asset, but also in maintaining the operation, the continuous operations. Engaging in a different way. So I talked about uh, the digital assistant in the building, but it's all about building a new way to engage with client, but building also a new value chain. So think about the app store. You can now pay your, with your phone. And what about if you had that in your car? Is your, if your car was reminding you, hey, you're going to need to do your oil change and uh, change your tire to winter tire, let's take an appointment to, uh, to, uh, to the place where you're going to be servicing, having your car serviced. And then uh, what about having the car paying that? Right. You can load your credit card into the car, and then uh, the car could be paying so that you don't have in winter. Uh, you just uh, go and then fuel uh, your car, re refuel your car, and then go back and, and drive, and your, your car would have paid for that service. So that's things we are going to be doing. But also now, as we are moving also in the enter cars are moving into uh, the entertainment space, you could be downloading music from your car. Music from your car. You could be uh, downloading other things uh, for, for entertainment. And if one day we ever go to autonomous driving, uh, you're going to be having a huge place for, uh, for entertainment. What if your car was a way to pay that? And for car manufacturers, that is a game changer. It's a completely new business model. And I think we're getting, we're getting there. So now let's talk about Port of Rotterdam and the partnership we have uh, with, with our partner ecosystem. So it's all about digital twin. So digital twin, in a very simple way, it's the digital representation of a physical object or place. So what is it about? At the end of the day, it's about use case and benefit. So the digital twin, having a digital representation of the Port of Rotterdam, helps achieve a couple, of business, uh, a couple of business objectives. The first one is being ready for autonomous uh, shipping, uh, which is, will be coming, I think, in a couple of years from now. There's a lot of trials already. Um, so be ready for that. But there's also an immediate impact right now, which is about birthing ship faster and safer. And remember, in the port of Rotterdam, I think that's about 100 ships per day. So if we help birth the ships one hour faster, one hour faster, it's about $80,000 saved per ship, times 100 ships, times about 100 days of operations, maybe 160, I'm not 100% sure. But that's a huge amount of saving. That also has impact for the shipping company themselves. If they can birth their ship faster, they can reuse that, uh, that, 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 that bandwidth and, and ship more goods, right? It's huge impact. So how do we do that? Where should we do that? Giving Harbour Master um, information about what is the best route or the optimal route to birth a ship in, in the port of Rotterdam. So optimal route may mean different things. It could be the fastest route, but the fastest route probably needs more assets. You're going to need more take boats. You're going to need more assets to take the boat in the right direction, right? Um, or it could be the best route could mean, well, the one that saves the most energy, right? So you can slow down your boat and uh, you need less tag, tag boats to, to, to kind of trail and, and guide uh, the, uh, the, contain the, the shipping container in, in the right direction. So giving information for the harbour master to make the best decision on the optimal route. So how do we do that? It's using a lot of sensors, obviously. So we're using weather data. So it's all about the wind. Remember when you have a boat that has containers which are about 10 or 15 stories? The impact of the wind is pretty big, and especially in the port of Rotterdam. If you look at the physical nature of the port of Rotterdam, there's not too many places, and the boat cannot go in, any, in, in every direction, right? So the wind information is important. The speed of the wind, the direction of the wind. We have sensors for that. The the, um, the, the height of the tide is important as well, because depending on, uh, on, on the size of the boat and the, 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 the tide, you can berth a boat somewhere or elsewhere, right? So that's important. We have sensors for that. The speed of the current, we have sensors for that, right? So, so you put all that together, and there's a huge amount of data that the captain of the boat and 
the harbor master can leverage to, uh, to, uh, to make better decisions in terms of birthing ship faster, safer, and in a, in, in, a, in a better way. So that's the use case. So uh, I think we have Vincent here from Port of Rotterdam. He will be uh, standing at the IBM booth as well. So please engage if you need more information about that. So that's the Port of Rotterdam story, but now think about the industry you are serving or your clients are serving. IoT is everywhere, serving many different use cases in many different industries. And I could sit here or stand here for hours and hours going through different use cases. At the end of the day, it's all about business value. And through the survey, the typical business value we found in different industries are represented somewhere here. Whoops, sorry, I'm going one, one back. OK. So, so it's all about finding the value in these use cases, from ranging from predictive maintenance to what can you do with a connected vehicle, whether it's, whether it's a car or any other uh, device. How you manage your fleet how you optimize your fleet operations, how you streamline your, your business and your operations, how you improve your, the quality of products that you are manufacturing, how you're improving the output of your plant, how you manage, better manage the robots in the factory. All this is enabled through IoT. So what is the difference when everybody wants to do IoT, when a lot of data flows into, in, into the system and it's actually it's pretty cheap now to collect data, right? Um, it's technical, extremely feasible. We have partners that can prove that from building sensors, connecting, implementing sensors, connecting sensors, providing the connectivity, and, and, and bringing all that data up. So what is the difference? We believe at IBM the difference is about cognitive. So it's about making sense of all the data you have. And in the future, the, the sum of data that will be coming into these cloud systems is going to grow tremendously. So what are you doing with that data? How can you make sense of all the noise? Because you cannot necessarily exploit all of the data. How do you use correlation to make sense of that data for a specific business purpose? So I come back to the business purpose. What is the business value? So I think that's critical as we are engaging with our clients that we help them understand the value they can drive out of IoT. And again, there's we think there's too many major use cases. One of them is, I would say, with clients that are spending money to make better operations, so make, spending money to save money somehow, so improving their processes, or spending money to innovate and, and change their business, change the nature of their business and the way they engage uh, with their customers. And all this is through data. So I want to speak a couple of minutes about data, data ownership. Ingrid talked about that. I think that's, that's going to be the next big thing. And we're already in there. Who owns the data? And at IBM, we want to make sure it is very clear for our clients and our partners that your data is your data. We are not in the business that Ingrid described on Google. We are not in the business of leveraging your data or your customer's data for the purpose of building an IBM algorithm that we would reuse elsewhere. Our customer data are private. We're very serious about that. They're isolated, they're secured, and they are not being used by IBM or anybody else for another purpose, broader purpose. So we are very strong in, in saying your data in all our contractual relationship prove that the customer data remains the customer's data. That is their competitive advantage, and there's no way they, will, they would like to share that with, with others. So that's pretty important. The last thing I want to mention um, is about uh, key principles. So we've published a couple of key principles for, for AI. So I mentioned about one of them, so the purpose of, of AI. So when we are going to be using artificial intelligence and augmented intelligence in our products, we will make sure that you as a user, you know how this is being used. That's very important. You do not want to have an algorithm, which is a black box, and giving you advice is that you have no clue how this, is come, this advice was given to you and whether you can trust that advice. So in, in when using AI in our products and solutions, we'll guide you through what is the purpose of AI and how this is being used. Transparency in usage, I've just mentioned that. Customer data is, is customer data. Uh, we are not building an IBM business model on others' data. Right? So that's, that's very important. We are here to enable customers and partners to build their business on their data. 
We're enabling them, but we are not leveraging that data ourselves. There's also a notion about skills. Um, there's, a, there's a pretty big reason why most of our clients now have, have transitioned from doing POC on IoT to really rolling out, um, rolling out IoT projects. It's because they have skills. And here, as partners, we have IoT skills. And there's a new set of, of skills that are needed, and, and we want to be able to train these kind of skills. The data science, being able to leverage the amount of data, is, is a new skill that we think is extremely important and will, be, will, come, will become paramount to any IoT and, and, and data project. Security and trust. I'm going to give you an example. If you're driving your car, you don't want the car uh, driving next to you hijack your own car system, right? So security, embed security in everything we do is critical, critical, critical. And that's when we're working with car manufacturers in their system engineering, making sure security is core of that. And in a typical car, you have about 100,000 lines of codes. And that code is actually putting in motion security systems, motion systems, speed, and so on and so forth. So you do not want that code to be broken. So that's where we're doing with system engineering or system engineering solutions. At the end of the day, who's in charge? We believe that at the end of the day, we human, person, people are in charge. We can, un we can pull the plug if we want to do that. So in all IoT systems, in all the business cases that we are delivering and, and our clients are reaching, we want to make sure that at the end of the day, they can decide if they want to use the AI for a specific purpose and how they want to use it. Right. I think that's critical that we are remaining in charge. Um, and then there's, there's, there's no self-aware artificial intelligence that will decide for us. That's why we move from artificial intelligence to augmented intelligence. And IoT is a deep enabler of that. All right, I want to stop here. Um, you can find a lot of use cases uh, that I've not had the time to mention in the IBM booth. So you can uh, pick a little bit of a leaflet, and then uh, you, you'll find a lot of use cases. Come, to talk to, come and talk to us at the booth. Uh, we can go deeper in Port of Rotterdam, uh, and any of the partners uh, here are, can actually speak about Port of Rotterdam and what we did together with, uh, with Accents and, and Cisco and the other partners. All right, thank you.